Hi everyone, welcome back. I am Andrea of Alu Knits on Instagram, uh, and this is episode two of my YouTube podcast or vlog or whatever it is considered. Um, so if you're joining me again from episode one, thank you for returning. If you're new, uh, this is my podcast where I'm just going to talk about knitting, talk about my FOs, uh, my stash acquisitions, and also every single podcast episode will feature a wellness tip from me. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Andrea. I'm a physical therapist who's also a crazy avid knitter. Um, I knit probably two hours a day on average, um, usually at night after my kids go to sleep. And I started in January of 2021 putting out uh, Make Your Self Care Reels on Instagram. And I put a new one up every Friday. Um, just with either a tip for keeping your body healthy or a stretch or an exercise. Um, I've done series on posture for your entire kind of upper body, whether you're knitting or crocheting and kind of the optimal postures to be in and things to watch out for, things to avoid, things like that. Um, so if you haven't seen them yet, you can check them out on my Instagram. All the reels are also uploaded here on YouTube um, as well. So you can check it there or on my website, um, and, which is linked below. If you have any questions about my makes, about the patterns or yarns I used, I also keep my Ravelry page pretty updated as well, and I will link that below as well, too. Um, so, uh, welcome to episode two. Today, I wanted to sh talk to you and show you what I've made so far in 2021. Um, and also, you know, show you things that have come in the mail. I've had a lot of things come in the mail in the two weeks since I filmed the first episode. Kind of went a little crazy with buying. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to try to slow down a little bit because as you'll see, a lot of stuff came in the mail. Um, yeah. And, uh, and then at the end, we'll go over the wellness tip for this podcast episode too. All right. So to show you what I got in the mail. So... First, I got some Camellia Fiber Company. Um, this is the sport weight um, base, and this is their colorway clay, which is one of their spring colorways. It's this pretty kind of peachy pink pale blush kind of color. Um, I really like it. Um, if you've um, followed me for some time, or if you look at my Ravelry page, you'll see I usually knit my I usually go tends to tend towards a palette of like jewel tones and um I guess bold colors saturated colors I didn't used to knit a lot with anything pale or pastel or neutral um and that's really shifted this year and part of that is uh just the people I'm inspired by um one of the people who is one of my biggest inspirations is Arrow of um or Arrow sorry Arrow Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls. She has her own podcast as well that you should definitely check out. It is amazing. Um, and this is totally her color palette. And just uh, becoming friends with her this past year, um, we do knit nights every once in a while on FaceTime. And just um, her color palette has just really seeped into mine. Um, also, my friend Gabriella of Gabriella Makes, or yes, Gabriella Makes on Instagram. Um, she's also really heavy into neutrals and testing for her the past year. And a half has really kind of brought me all the way over to that spectrum. Um, but I still love my bolds. I still love my saturated colors. So you'll probably just see a lot of everything. So yeah, this is Camellia Fiber Company. Love them. Um, and I got some Lola Bean in the mail. So if you don't know, Lola Bean is notorious for sometimes being really difficult to get. Her updates sell out crazy quick. And so do any uh, store updates, any like local yarn stores that carry her. I was lucky enough. So my... They're not my local yarn store, but Eat Sleep Knit, uh, based out of uh, Georgia. They were my online local yarn store for a while, back when I lived um, in the greater Boston area and didn't really have a great local yarn store to go to. Um, they were my online local yarn store, and they carry Lola Bean. Um, and I happened to see their email saying that they got a restock, and I jumped on it right away. Um, and what I got was, I got two skeins of this, Plummeting Upwards. These are both in, um, I got both in finger rings, so Plummeting Upwards. It's absolutely so beautiful. Adela is amazing with speckles. And I also got the City So Nice, they named it twice. And this was um, a, a colorway she made for, I think, Vogue Knit, Vogue Knit Live or something, or 
uh, that big yarn conference in New York. Um, and I could not believe that I snagged this because I think she did a pre-order for it last year and it was crazy. Like I think she's, it was a crazy pre-order from what I remember. And I'm so glad I got some this time. So yeah, uh, I don't know what these will become. I have plans for them to become um, short sleeve tees of some sort. Um, probably one will probably be a koi tee by Ginkgo Bee. Um, the other one, not sure yet. Um, yeah. Oh, and the camellia is in plans for a test knit that I will do sometime in the future for Gabriella. Gabriella is one of the few designers that I test knit for uh, consistently. Um, she's just my really good friend. I really love her aesthetic and the pattern she comes up with. And uh, I just love her philosophy too, with how she treats everyone in her life and how she approaches being a business owner, a small business owner, um, and just how generous she is with her platform and with her time as well. So love you, Gabriella. Um, and then I got this yesterday. This is Craft Me Not Yarn Co. Sarah. This is from her Macaron collection. This is in her woolen base. So it is 10% linen, 90% merino. Okay, and this is finger weight. So I'm gonna hold up close here. You can kind of see it has a little bit of a tiny bit of a halo from that linen, I believe. And this one, you can kind of see the small speck. I think you can see it, small bits of linen a little bit. Um, so I'm really excited to try this out. I live in Texas where it is really hot most of the year. So I am trying to branch out into more plant-based fibers and just cooler fibers. Um, I, you know, I've tried cotton a couple of times. I love cotton, depending on which company it is. Um, but I do want to try a wool cotton blend sometime and I want to try linen. 100% um, linen kind of scares me because of how rough and scratchy it feels. Um, I know it's supposed to soften up and uh, break in, in a sense, once you block and wash it and dry it. Um, but I have very sensitive skin, so I don't know if I could actually stand knitting with it. Um, so I figured this 10%, 90% combo was a good one to test out. And, you know, so far it feels really soft to me. Um, it probably feels the same level of rusticness to my fingers as VFL does. Um, like I said, I have really sensitive skin. Um, you know, I like, I get red spots all over like the minute something irritates me. Um, so kind of texture and how soft the yarn is is really important for me because if it's really not soft at all, like I cannot, I can't wear it. Okay, so that's why I got on yarn. A lot of stuff. Oh, and I forgot to say, this is her Cafe colorway too. Again, another neutral. You can see I'm kind of tending towards neutrals these days. Um, and I also got some stitch markers in so Gabriella who I mentioned before who is a designer she also dyes yarn um, she also started making some stitch markers recently or not I shouldn't say started she has been made stitch markers she just released an update recently so I snagged these in a couple of different updates but these are resin stitch markers so this is I'm trying to get it to focus here we go it's this one this one and this one they are so beautiful and they're so unique so the back of them is kind of like this brassy gold plated color okay um i also got a fourth one but it's currently on a project <laughs> actually i'll show you when i show you my widths um so yeah, i got these from an update they are so beautiful they're um i don't know if you can see but they're actually textured so like the resin doesn't she didn't put any resin on top of everything so they're not completely smooth on top um but i like that they're kind of textured and so far it hasn't caught on anything like i was to be very honest i was a little worried when i got them that maybe the roughness might catch on the fibers of whatever project i was doing and so far but so far i've had no issues i mean they're not completely rough like they are there is a thin layer of resin on top of them um, but it's not like they're everything is completely filled in. It's like completely smooth. But I kind of love that it, You know, it gives it a lot of character it sets them apart makes them very different um, So those are some stitch markers I got recently and then I also got some stitch markers from uh, Yesenia um, her handle is Senia studio So I got this set of stitch markers. I also got another set um, And I already opened them and I'm using them, um, but they're kind of like little pink disc shaped rocks stacked on top of each other and I also got a pair of earrings yeah yeah I can't wait to wear these um maybe next episode depending on what I'm wearing I can pair them with them um 
yeah, I tried them on already. They don't feel like super heavy. Um, they feel a little heavy to me, but I'm someone who always wears studs usually because uh, I have little toddlers and I don't want my earlobes yanked open. Um, but I'm really excited to wear these. They don't feel any heavier than like normal danglies, I think. So yeah. So thank you, Yuzenia. These are beautiful. So that's it for what I've acquired. Uh, let me show you my whips. Um, I don't really have much to show. Uh, I Since the last two weeks, I've been working mostly on the sweater test I had, that toddler sweater I showed you last time, and also this one, my son and solace tee. So I'll talk about this a little bit later. Um, so the only other FO I've kind of picked up is my summer sorrel tee here. Uh, so, I mean, I made a couple rows progress on it. I'm still working on the yoke. I'm on the third chart of the yoke now. So probably um, by this weekend, I should be on to sleep separation and onto the body. Um, and this is that other Gabriella stitch marker I'm using here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's my whips. Um, so uh, FOs I've completed recently. So one is the In My Pocket sweater by Rachel Knits Things. This is a sweater test. This is a toddler sweater. This is the size 2T. It's for my son who is turning two in August. Um, it is so cute. Uh, so this one, uh, I mentioned the first one that she has instructions for either to knit top down or bottom up. I chose to do top down. Um, and you can see it's kind of like a drop shoulder here. So you pick up the all the stitches for the sleeves. Um, I did have to redo the collar um, and knit it a size down and what I did because it was just a, like a little too big and was sitting kind of oddly But I think this will be fine now um, I tried to get FO pics of it with him wearing them and He was not having it. Um, I'll see if I'll post them. I don't know. They're like really comical But I also you know, I'm I try to be very mindful of what pictures I post online of my kids uh, Knowing that you know to a certain extent. It's you know they don't give full consent because they can't give consent and I'm also trying to be mindful of not just posting their whole life up on public social media um, so we'll see um, I do want to try to get better FO shots though uh, so we'll see if that happens it might not happen until six months later I think part of the reason he didn't want to wear it was because he was just like this is hot like I don't want to wear it right now um, but yeah so that's this one uh, look for that to release I think it's gonna release um, sometime in July yeah and the other FO I finished is this, my Sun and Solace tee. So Sun and Solace tee is a pattern by Tina Say Knits. And this is part of my Monet collection of sweaters. So the uh, main color is the April Club colorway of the Monet Impressionis Impressionisms Club by the Red Pansy, by Kelly of the Red Pansy. And this one was based on the painting uh, Sailboats Behind the Needle. You can see it's kind of got like this tannish but mint chocolate mint chocolate mint green just weaving through it with dark brown speckles it reminds me of chocolate mint chocolate chip ice cream um and then the cc is suburban stitcher in her colorway dusty rose dusty rose dusty pink dusty pink yeah um yeah i really love it um the v is a little deep for me so i am wearing a tank underneath maybe one day if i'm brave enough i will go without the tank um yeah I kind of love the stitches. Um, I did, I knit size seven. So I had about like seven inches of positive ease. Um, and I think I chose the right size because anything any like tighter, I probably would feel a little bit more uncomfortable in. Um, I like to have a couple of inches of positive ease in my sweaters. Um, yeah, but I am really happy with it. Um, I really love how it looks. I love how it blocked out and that mosaic kind of pattern um, coming through. And I think the yarns I chose just paired really well together. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that is Sun and Solace Tea. Okay, so the next part I wanna talk about is to kind of show you what I've made so far in 2021 that is not part of my Monet collection. Um, I've actually been really prolific. I was counting everything and including like this one and that one and that little bait, the little toddler cardigan, I've made 11 garments this year already, which is crazy because last year I only made seven garments and the year before that, I only averaged maybe one garment every two years. I was mainly like a shawl and socks knitter. So it is crazy to me how quickly I am knitting things up. But, you know, when you're inspired, that's just what happens. Um, and I've been feeling really inspired the past year, which is really awesome. Okay, so 
the beginning of the year, I finished my Criterion sweater. I started this at the end of last year, but I finished it in January, so I count it as a finish for 2021. So this is Criterion sweater by Wool and Pine Designs. I opted for like a low contrast um, between the MC and CC. These are both Explorer knits and fibers colorways. This is Jazz Blue in her cashmere um, base. It is so soft and so luxurious. And then the CC is, um, shoot, I'm blanking. It is one of her National Parks colorways. I'm going to look it up and I will stick it there. Um, yeah, so I kind of love how it is low contrast. Um, yeah, I just love it. I really love it. I modified it to just make it kind of elbow length sleeves. Um, yeah. So that's Criterion. Next, I've got Coastal Crop Raglan. This is by Tiff Nealon. I tested it for her last year. Um, this one was just a for me knit. This was part of my Make Nine list for 2021 also. This is in Magpie Fibers DK, their Swanky DK base. So the MC is London Rain and the CC is Paris Train. And the CC is just down here, the cuff and a little bit on the neckline here. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the swanky DK base for Magpie Fibers. It is a cashmere, has cashmere in it, and it is so soft again. Okay, um, yeah, and I, I really loved this sweater. This is one of my favorite makes I've made so far. It fits me perfectly. I love the amount of ease. I love the depth of the raglan. Um, in her design, you can see there's like a small detailing too at the raglan. Some eyelets over here and kind of this double border. Yeah. So yeah, I really, oh, and the sides, I forgot about the sides. There's a braid detail down the side too. And it's a split, split hem. But yeah, I really love this sweater pattern. Um, I will probably knit it again sometime. Um, yeah, and I knit it like full length. I didn't crop it. I probably, I do want to make like a crop version to wear over like dresses and skirts. Um, so yeah, but I love this pattern. I highly recommend it. Next, um, another Tina C pattern. This is Wavelength by Tina C Knits, uh, Tina C Designs. Um, and this is the Red Pansy Yarn. This is Morning Dove. And the CC is Chestnut. And I love this one too. Um, this pattern, I did knit exactly to pattern. Um, and so, well, at least for the length. So it is like almost tunic length. So if you're not someone who likes tunic length, I would suggest like, um, shortening a little bit. She does have instructions where you can omit like parts of the chart for like a shorter, more crop fit. Um, it's, she's writes it up for either a crop fit or for like a full length fit. I opted for full length. I also made mine short sleeved instead of long sleeved. The long sleeve version, um, also has the, um, the sound wave kind of chart, like down the sleeve in intervals as well. And she also has charts in there where you can put a word. You could put in a word on the sleeve is where she writes it, but you could put it really anywhere if you know how to substitute it in on a chart. I opted not to do any of that, to just do short sleeves. Um, this is the perfect, it's DK weight. So it is a little heavy, but it's the perfect weight to be wearing like on a like, I don't know, like a 50 or 60 degree chilly fall day. Um, yeah. And I really love it too. I love the tunic length. I live in leggings when it's not really hot. I wear them like I live in leggings, so this is the perfect length for me to wear with leggings too. All right, my la next two are tests I did for Gabriella. So the first one is the Maya top. Here, you can see it's got a patterned yoke with ball. Um, I'm sorry, they're not bobbles. What does she call them? lips please I don't know I can't remember what she called them they're not bobbles is what I was told <laughs> I can't remember what right now what they're called um but yeah and it's fingering weight you can see the gauge is quite airy so it is kind of perfect as a summer top a spring top um because the gauge is very airy if you use a lighter colored yarn like I kind of did it can be a little see-through so I usually wear this with a tank underneath yeah, and it's got a rolled edge hem. Um, I'm like rolled edge hems are not my favorite, but so far I've been wearing this with like skirts um, tucked in, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, 
and the sleeves are done with kind of like a crochet hook. So there's like two options in there. I did mine with a crochet hook. Yeah. That's the Maya top. And then the last one is a pre-test I did for her. This is a pattern that is right now exclusive to her Patreon subscribers. So you get it if you subscribe to her Patreon. Um, I think eventually it will be released for the general public. But right now it's just for Patreon subscribers. So I pre-tested this for her. It's the Comola Floor top. It's another crop. And this was actually my first, I think, true cropped uh, tee or sweater. And it's what made me feel like I could wear crops and look relatively good. I mean, the high-waisted pants are de a definite must, um, which, you know, I'm slow to trends, but I'm getting on board. Um, but yeah, so you can see this one has an eyelet raglan down the side, and it's got this wavy stitch lace at the bottom. I did mine in 100% Pima Cotton. This is um, Juniper Moon Farm in their Neve 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 base. Um, it's a chain ply cotton. Um, to be honest, I didn't really love working with it. It was not very pliable. Even though I know cotton isn't compared to wool, it wasn't very pliable. It hurt my hands a lot, and I had to take a lot of breaks when I was working on it, um, like in contrast to my Simone sweater, which I wore last week, which I forgot to tell you what it was. I'm sorry. So last week, um, I wore my Simone sweater, also by Gabriella, and that one I knit in Malabrigo Verano, which is a 100% Pima cotton, but it has a twist instead of a ply, and that one like didn't hurt my hands at all. I loved working with it. I would have actually knit this up in that again, but I just couldn't. The uh, Eat Sleep Knit, which is where I got it from, just didn't have any good colors or colors I liked in stock so I decided to try a new one and I didn't love this one um so yeah just fair warning I mean some people you know knitting with cotton or linen or other fibers doesn't really hurt their hands um so that's you you'll probably like it fine I mean I do admit the stitch definition is amazing in this um but it was for me it was not worth the um the wrist aching so yeah, those were my FOs of 2021 so far that weren't Monet collection. So that is it for my makes. Um, so let's move on to this week's wellness tip. Um, so the wellness tip for this episode is all about not compressing your wrists. Um, so I guess a concise way to say it would be try to leave your wrists and your forearms free from any pressure when you're knitting or crocheting or sewing. Um, and what I mean by this is um, try not to wear tight uh, hairbands. I know I'm wearing right now, but I promise you it is not tight. It is like, if you can see it, I can slide it up and down. So it's not tight. Um, and that reason is because if there's anything tight around your wrist or your forearms, it can compress your um, nerves that are running through. Um, and that's kind of what causes carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel is basically compression of the nerves running through your carpal tunnel right here. Okay. And so these nerves, you got radial, ulnar, and median nerve are the main ones that run through. Um, there's a bunch of other small ones that branch off of those big ones, but they supply sensation and they supply strength to the muscles in the skin in your hands. Um, and compressing them anywhere along your carpal tunnel here, even down here at your elbow, your ulnar nerve runs right outside your elbow right here, and it's pretty easy to kind of compress and hit it. It's what we call the funny bone when it gets hit. That's actually your ulnar nerve. It's not a bone. Um, and so compressing them can lead to just feelings of pain, of num numbness, tingling. Um, if it's a long-term compression, it can cause effects such as, you know, muscle weakness and that kind of thing. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at how you're knitting or crocheting. Uh, take a look at the posture in. Um, you know, try not to wear tight hair ties. All right. Um, like for me, I actually don't like anything tight on my forearms or my wrists. It's kind of like an aversion I have to it. So I never wear a brand new hair tie. I always wear her to stretch out a little bit more before I actually even slip it on my wrist. Um, and also if you're knitting or crocheting, let me grab mine just to show you an example. If you're crocheting, try to, you know, have your wrists and your forearms free. Um, I used to sometimes knit and be leaning forward on a table or, you know, if you're sitting at a table and knitting with friends or at home on a dining room table, um, if you find that you're leaning against the table and it's compressing, you know, somewhere around here, here, you know, that could, you know, lead to um, pain, tum pain, numbness, tingling, what have you. Um, you know, so try to have a free, you know, maybe rest your elbows up on the table instead. Um, yeah, and so that's the tip for this week. Um, 
if you're interested in learning more about how to position yourself when you're knitting or crocheting, like I said, I had that series on posture for when you're knitting. I also, the reel for this week, sneak peek, um, is going to be about how to use pillows to help position your body when you're knitting or crocheting too. Um, so I hope that you find that helpful. Um, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this week's episode. I do plan to make episodes like once every two to three weeks. Um, I won't be filming another one until mid-July uh, because my brother and sister are going to come visit me next week. They're going to be here for about two weeks. Um, I haven't seen them in a year and a half to two years was the last time I saw either one of them. So I'm really excited. So I'm going to be taking time away from um, making videos and whatnot to spend time with them. Um, my Patreon subscribers, don't worry. I have pre-filmed everything um, and we'll have it all edited up and ready to go for you so you won't be missing out on anything. Um, same thing for my reels. My reels will hopefully be pre-filmed. I'm planning on doing that this week um, and pre-edited and I'll just release them uh, the next couple weeks. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's it for this episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know below um, any questions you have. Um, if there's any stitch markers that you love, I've been really looking at stitch markers recently and just kind of collecting them because it's a little cheaper than collecting yarn. Um, if you have any tea, short sleeve tea recommendations, drop them below as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining me.